one way of breaking down the stages of early Christianity is in terms of its key figures. In the earliest stages, you had the apostles. Following the apostles, you had this loose group of men called the Apostolic Fathers, who wrote between about 90 AD and the second half of the second century AD. Overlapping with this group is another group called the Apologists, who flourished from about 120 AD to 220 AD. I say they overlapped with the Apostolic Fathers because the fragments of Quadratus are sometimes included among the Apostolic Fathers. The Epistle to Diomedes, also an apology, is included sometimes among the Apostolic Fathers. But in general, this is a, an identifiable separate and later group than the Apostolic Fathers. Now, they're called the Apologists um, after a Greek word, apologia, that means a defense. So what the Apologists were concerned to do was to provide a defense of the Christian faith against detractors. Both Jewish detractors, on the one hand, who believed that um, the Christians held a heretical view of Christ, and particularly in light of the fact that Christ had been crucified and died a shameful death on the cross, which to Jews signified that Jesus had been rejected by God. And they were responding to Greeks on the other hand, Greeks and Romans, and particularly addressing their writings to the leadership, statesmen, and even to Roman emperors. <clears throat> so among the apologists, in addition to the author of the Epistle to Diognetus, Quadratus, are other apologists, Tatian, Aristides, and perhaps most well-known, a figure named Justin Martyr. Justin Martyr had studied philosophy with all the major philosophical schools, the Stoics, the Epicureans, the Platonists. And after gaining Platonist sympathies, one day he was down on the beach and by chance ran into a Christian man who talked Justin out of his Platonism and convinced him of the true philosophy of Christianity. And you can see in Justin some of the main charges that were being made against Christians and some of the main arguments that the apologists used against them. Um, some of the main charges included atheism. Strangely enough, um, the Christians did worship a God, but that God to outsiders was an invisible God, and in that sense seemed to be a non-existent God. Other charges included the charge of cannibalism. Why? Because Christians had a ritual where they consumed the flesh of this character, Jesus. They were also charged with incest. Again, this was a misunderstanding based on the fact that Christians had a ritual that they called an agape feast, um, where they called each other brother and sister. So you combine this idea of a love feast within family, and it appears to be incest. Um, so the apologists were very poorly understood, and ultimately their goal was to show that Christians had not, in fact, committed any crimes. Um, the apologists were concerned that Christians were instead being charged with the mere fact of bearing the name Christian. And you see this over and over in their apologies, that they're being charged with being Christian rather than with having committed any particular crime. Unfortunately, the apologists were not ultimately terribly effective at what they were doing. After all, if you take a character like Justin Martyr, who was, well, eventually martyred um, for being a Christian. And persecution from this stage on actually begins to escalate, as you see in the third century. Nonetheless, this group of apologists is, is a very important group and certainly the next group to study after the Apostolic Fathers.